Matthias Schuter was living in Paddock's condo and now cops just made another disturbing find. It's been nearly two months exactly since the Las Vegas massacre which was the largest mass shooting in modern history that strangely disappeared from the media and left major questions unanswered. Now, police have confirmed the death of a second shooter who was caught committing a copycat attack and killer Stephen Paddock's other hometown in Nevada where he owned property. Thickening the forgotten plot was what was found after authorities took this second shooter out that proves a chilling connection to Paddock and possibly provides some answers to the Vegas massacre mystery that investigators seem desperate to hide. The investigation into the October 1st massacre at Mandalay Bay has been flawed, to say the least. For the victims of the families and citizens seeking answers it hasn't been forgotten and only more questions have arisen in the mystery as to why this strange case has been treated so different than all other crimes of this magnitude. The truth has a way of revealing itself, which, unfortunately, came out in a terrifying way with what just happened in Reno, Nevada. While little is being released about the Vegas shooter and his motive, what was well known is that he owned property in both Nevada casino towns of Las Vegas and Reno. So it comes as a sickening surprise that almost exactly two months after Paddock opened fired from a high-rise in Vegas, that the exact same attack was attempted in a high-rise in Reno. Thankfully, the gunman in this would-be copycat massacre was killed before he could murder innocent people beneath him. The response was a major difference from the Vegas incident which was perhaps not ironic. The Washington Post reports. A gunman was killed by police after he fired shots from an elevated position at a luxury apartment complex in downtown Reno, Nevada, shortly before 7 p.m. Tuesday, police said. Barricaded in a room on the eighth floor of the high-rise building, the shooter sent bullets raining onto the street below. No other casualties have been reported except for a woman who was injured in the hand, the Sparks Police Department said in a news release. She did not need medical treatment. Few details about the incident were available Tuesday night. Neither the identity of the shooter nor the intended target was known. Tuesday's shooting at the Montage Complex came less than two months after Stephen Paddock killed 58 people and injured nearly 500 others in Las Vegas, the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. Paddock, 64, fired at thousands of unsuspecting concertgoers from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino before killing himself. It's not coincidental that Paddock has been mentioned in the, rather limited, reporting of this narrowly averted tragedy since the tactic was identical. However, the mode of operation wasn't all this now dead would-be murder had in connection to Paddock. The Post explains the chilling connection. Paddock once owned a unit at the Montage, the Associated Press reported, adding that records showed he sold the property in December 2016. After police arrived at the Reno apartment complex, the gunman continued to fire shots from inside the room. A woman was also inside the apartment, Sparks Police said in its news release. The woman, whom police initially described as a hostage, was not injured in the shooting, the Reno Gazette Journal reported. Authorities negotiated with a shooter, Reno Police Department officer Tim Bordway told reporters in a news conference. At one point, police tweeted that the suspect had been detained. Police officers and a SWAT team then converged on the suspect's room and an officer-involved shooting occurred, according to the Sparks Police news release. The shooter received medical aid on the scene and was transported to a hospital, where he was pronounced dead, police said. If it seems strange that a man who was in the same residential high-rise where Paddock once owned property attempted to commit the same crime, you're not alone. There's the question of if these two knew each other or if this subsequent attacker knew more than should have about the mysterious Vegas attack and faced the same deadly fate as so many surviving victims in Vegas. Sparks police should be praised for their exceptionally quick response, but it's also a major contrast to Vegas police's response time. Paddock was able to massacre hordes of people before he was killed. Perhaps this incident will be swept under the rug as fast as Paddock's strange case, if not quicker. It's already odd that a name or any information about the individual killed by police has not been released. Maybe once, or if, it is, a lot more will come back that answers lingering questions in the Vegas massacre authorities seem to want the country to forget. 
Yet, 